Um, it's a longer story, like most of this stuff is. I'll just read until Ken tells me to stop. Uh, there were fires. Macario started them, at first in the empty lots dotting our town. More than once I caught him feeding kerosene into trash-filled barrels near the hotel that doubles as a wax museum on weekends. The police were one step behind, as was a whole town who suspected Macario but had no proof. I found him in my grandparents' shed, dancing among the preserves. Choked cherry jams and the hearts of pickled squash nearly fell from their place in the cupboard. At the end of the dance, Macario took the medias preserves and smashed them against the brick wall in the alley where the police captain races his Enfeld motorcycle through. Why are you doing this, I yelled as I smashed jars too. But I knew why. His father's latest stint in the nearby island prison was for Macario, a good reason to set fires, break jars, and steal things of little value. The island prison, just miles offshore, is famous for its lighthouse, lit when prisoners attempt to escape, and for the many bats living in the islands in the island's caves that fly out each evening looking for tasty insects. It holds Macario's father, a bank robber, and some say murderer. There isn't a jail alive that can keep my father, Macario says, while we watch a prison through binoculars. Its walls look rough like they're made of coral, but according to this old man we met at McDonald's, a former prisoner, the stone is special. The more you try to break it, the stronger it gets, he says. How is the stone cut, I asked. Between long sips of a green milkshake, he told me to shut my animal trap. I said nothing after that and instead studied the burns and scars that covered Macario's hands. For being short, Macario's hands are strangely long, so long that he can shuffle a deck of cards with just three fingers. Their bones have been fractured several times. He won't say why or by whom, but Macario claims his crooked hang hands force him to steal. Rusty bicycle springs, doorknobs, horseshoes too small for even the slightest pony phony copper rings, plastic toys, or anything with polished blue-green stones are just some, some items he collects. His lowest thieving moment came when he took a small charity collection box at the supermarket. Give to the blind children, it said. Inside was 47 cents, nearly all in pennies. Three yellow pills that when swallowed made you cough as if chicken feathers were caught in your throat, and a slip of paper folded in two. Macario unfolded the paper, rubbed at, its word like, rubbed at its at the words like they were braille, and threw it on the ground. I picked up the paper and read out loud, take a penny, leave a penny. Macario immediately gave me a beaten coin, took one for himself, and scattered the rest on the streets. Shortly after taking the box, Macario went temporarily blind. This is how it happened. We had gone to the train tracks to stare at the migrants as jump on and off on their way to the United States. There are some beauties there, and Macario and I try to get their attention. No dice. Macario thinks that the girls act like princesses, as if they shut silver and exhale gold, he'll say. Their, their legs are closed to the likes of us, not even one smile among them, and you would think that in their villages of no running water, where the streets are paved with scorpions, or plagued with the croaking of hateful bullfrogs, that they would warm to us. Instead, they keep their heads lowered, sitting next to their fathers, brothers, and uncles, who guard their virtue like a magpie protects its pine tree nest. The rumbling of the train threw, off sparks, threw sparks off the tracks and several hit Macario's face. Afterwards, he saw just white light. He tried rubbing vision back into his eyeballs, and when he couldn't, Macario pulled at his hair, took out his knife and threatened to draw blood from the air, then demanded I lead him home. On our way back, I said what we both thought. Divine justice, Macario, God's punishment for taking the blind kid's coin box. Macario, still rubbing his eyes, spat out, Fuck the blind kids. If what you say is right, then, the blind, then their blindness comes from God. They did something to deserve it, something bad. Unless it's all a big joke, Ludo. Anyway, quit preaching. It's fucking boring. Irritated, I walked on. Ahead of Macario, who held on to my belt, made small clouds of yellow dust twirl like dust devils at his feet. After a short while, Macario's eyes lulled side to side. I guess jagged bits of light were tearing deep into his sockets. In response, Macario grinded the back of his teeth so loud that you could hear large cuts of anger being crushed into powders and particles. He said to me, as a kind of test, I later thought, Hey Ludo, describe the trees, the dirt lots filled with dead cars. Describe the strange statue of a fat baby riding a sea turtle in the center of the park. Don't be an ass, replied. You know what they look like. They haven't changed since yesterday. I shoved him with my forearm, since I hadn't completely gotten over his preaching remark. Macario fell forward, and when he did, 
Time flashed, and the moment cracked in two. There was a great, then there was a great slowing. I was sure of this as I could hear the old men waiting for a barber's shave clear dust from their throats. I could see the ash from the trash pit fires fall like little bits of hell swarming. As I stood between the past and the future, I watched the, living, the sweat living on Makadio's chest roll downward. I watched and I followed its electric zigzag path flow to his stomach, where it disappeared at the border separating his tanned waist and shorts. I felt my breath leave me, and when it returned heavy and dead, I was scared and hurting and full of shame. When time, came, when time went back to normal, Makari was pointing his finger at me, shouting things about my family, how my poor dead uncle lost at sea was a fag, how my mother's fear of detour signs, and my father's belief that there are underground people living underground lives was proof that they were crazy. He grabbed his shirt slung over his shoulder and tried to strangle me with it. He's as tough as a stonecutter's knife, but my knee found his balls and I gave him a good one. Go the fuck home, you thief, I yelled. Makario walked like he had nowhere to go, past the sterile fig trees we climbed as kids and the thorny bits of grass that the senile mare calls a park. Thank you.